Hello, I'm very pleased to be here. My name is Dietmar Gutwinkel, as Lorenzino already said. I'm a Sonkondit national expert from Germany to the European Commission, where I have the pleasure to work for at least two, maybe four years. And uh, I've been involved with the government for almost 20 years by now. Um, so uh, what I will try to do now is to zoom out even a bit further. DG Connect is the uh, Director General for uh, Communication Networks and Technology, and we are responsible for setting the European policy on these sectors. My unit is called the Government and Trust, and we are based neither in Brussels nor in Ispra nor in Sevilla. This is Luxembourg. We are based in um, this is Europe. We are based in Luxembourg, but nevertheless, we are supposed to deal with all member states, and this is what we do. Now, where's the connection to APIs? On the very basic level, it is about the single digital market. The European uh, Commission has early on realized that if we don't tackle digital, we will lose what we have achieved in, in having a single market in Europe pretty soon because we, you will have new barriers, new barriers uh, in, the, in, in the market that weren't there before because governments will have different digital um, interfaces, they will di have different rules, they will have different systems and then for companies or citizens to move through Europe will be even more difficult. Um, of course, there's also the, um, the idea to exploit efficiency gains for the companies, for um, citizens. That was sort of the first thing that always comes to mind if you're in the public sector and you talk about ICT, it is efficiency gains. But more important is what, we, what I mentioned just now using the same legal concepts, the same technical standards and the interoperable software is the only way not to create new digital barriers that will hinder the free flow of services, products, people, the, um, the uh, founding principles of the European Union. I mean, for us as people, uh, and for many of you I suppose as well, people moving around, we are quite often accustomed to the problem that even if you just move across the border, you cannot access public services anymore just because you have the wrong ID. Uh, so that's the sort of problems we are trying to tackle. But um, we are also face the, the problem that now, with expectations rising in the citizenry, because of their exposure to digital in all other spheres of, uh, of their lives, they have uh, rising expectations towards the public sector. If we don't meet those expectations, the trust in government and democracy will uh, decrease. This is something that's worrying and that we have to tackle. Somebody, in this um, case it is Gartner, has come up with a, a nice uh, model for uh, digital maturity in, of government. And I won't go into all this. I just show this that uh, they were very, 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 um, uh, I think, uh, ambitious, or I would even say a little bit ignorant about this reality in um, the public service, because they put API management right in the bottom of the second phase, which is the phase that we are supposedly exiting. But if you look at reality, and we will look at reality, APIs are not yet that um, well established in the public sector. But this is what we tried to move ahead as the policy unit. Well, the, in the past years, the most um, dominant uh, paradigm that we had to steer our, um, uh, our policy is open governments, meaning helping the public sector to open up processes, open services, and open data. And you can see there fairly easily that API would fit in even though they are mentioned in very few of the uh, policy papers, we will see that. What we're first talking about is breaking out of the silos that exist. Usually in the public sector, every administrative procedure has its own structure. It's not even the, uh, the, the governmental departments or the agencies that have their systems, it's each and every single procedure uh, that applying for one thing has a completely different uh, 
technological basis as applying for something else. This is even down enshrined in law sometimes. So what do we do as the policy unit? We fund building blocks that by being reused all over Europe should increase um, the uh, uh, interoperability of systems. We also fund work on vocabularies, on uh, uh, standards, mainly here through uh, something that's called um, semic, the semic action of ISA square. The building blocks were what we call the unit connecting Europe facility. I won't bore you with the details. In 2016, however, we developed the e-government action plan with 20 action, concrete actions about systems to be uh, developed and um, deployed by the European Commission. But uh, more importantly, coming up with seven foundational uh, principles that should govern um, the e-government policy. And there you have provisions on opening data and services. We are uh, committed to opening the data and services be between public administrations within and across borders to increase their efficiency and facility facilitate the free movements of businesses and citizens. And uh, why do we do that? Opening public sector data and services to third parties, it says the document, in full compliance with the legal framework for the protection of personal data and for privacy can contribute to growth and competitiveness. You can see that there is a direct connection to what APIs can do. Uh, that was picked up by the member states, you know, the uh, action plan being something that the European Commission committed to. The Tallinn Declaration is something all the member states, all 27 at that time, committed to uh, opening up uh, data and services, or it says here, to commit to expand and deepen the exchange and sharing of good e government practices and to speed up the digital transformation at all levels of government. And it says explicitly, prepare and implement initiatives to widen and deepen the use of data and analytics, including big data in our countries, to move to data-driven to, to move to data-driven public services, and make full use of data for better decision making. So here again, you can see how APIs fit in. More recently, we have come to um, uh, a decision called the the ones only principle, meaning that other than now, you shouldn't be able to be, uh, you shouldn't be forced to provide the same evidence again and again and again. I mean, personally, I've just filled out a form by my government that forces me to state again the gender of my son, you know, even though I just want to have to, to continue to have child benefit. I mean, is that supposed to change so often? And it shouldn't be left to me to then say that. <laughs> Why do I have to supply this? And it's even worse if you um, think of government issued certificates that you then have to carry and bring to another administration. That is simply senseless in a digital world. But it is the reality. There are some member states that are more advanced and have implemented once only principles in their digital strategies or in their reality already, but across border it simply doesn't work. From 2023, though, we will have the first set of procedures where this is mandatory to be impl implemented in all member states, and I think that's going to be a real big change, and of course we hope that this will spread further than this set of initiatives. And the European Commission Digital Strategy, once again, and Commission internal document that only commits for the Commission, um, has actually a host of things that what we want to realize uh, important for us is it actually mentions, and I think that's a first application programming interfaces. This is from last year. Okay, so and you see where we are. But we have a few exceptions, a few bright uh, lights. Uh, we have the CEF context bro broker, which is one of the billing blocks that I mentioned. And we will hear of, about that 
during uh, this day, um, which is a building block that actually exposes APIs to provide context information. I recommend to, to listen to the presentation. We also have the directive on open data and the re reuse of public, public sector information, also from last year, which actually will provide certain high value data in all member states through APIs. This is ongoing work, which um, data sets will be considered high value is under discussion and will be set up by an expert group in the next two years, I think. Um, but it, the, um, the directive goes even further and says that uh, dynamic data shall be made available as well for reuse. So there is some move towards API. And we will uh, officially launch the support data a center for data sharing pretty soon. Also for that, I recommend to listen to the uh, presentation that will go into detail there but that's also a major step towards API. And of course, we have our own study, which um, lays the foundation for future strategies that the EU Commission could uh, deploy. And I simply hope that this will bring, bring us further a step towards what we call government as a platform, that we will not only deliver data, but also even uh, offer our own processes so as to be embedded into other systems, private systems, um, like car registration. Why shouldn't that be offered by an insurer or something like that? We will fund um, this, hopefully, under a new um, uh, program that um, is called Digital Europe. It's a proposal so far by the Commission and has yet to be agreed to by the European Parliament. Um, it is uh, at the moment um, out for uh, consultation and uh, anybody, actually, or you all can contribute towards the shape of this program and say APIs should be part of it. Um, that's uh, just an uh, opportunity everybody has. And um, there uh, we will uh, fund the deployment and the use of digital capacities and interoperability, and that's where funding of APIs could take place. I will not go into the details of that. This is pretty much all I wanted to tell you as the big picture of what's behind the study we are doing and what's behind this event. So all I'm hoping for is that we have fruitful discussions and we will gain a lot of insight of what you actually need from government to do productive APIs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions in the room for Dietmar on the EU policy? Oh, yes. Thank you, Dietmar. Uh, I was very curious about the direction of the European Union about dynamic data providing by agencies because this is a critical point because every agency doesn't want to expose their data because they are essentially their assets. And there is on the other side the problem of the uh, GDPR, GDPR-related issues. And I am curious if there are documents that we can use to discuss with agencies, European documents, to discuss with agencies about this, those subjects. Because it could be very interesting, and if Europe will push for the publication via API of dynamic data, uh, it would be interesting for them to know so that they can be prepared in time, because uh, especially local agencies doesn't have the agility, uh, strangely, 
to create service services and provide APIs in a very short time. They have to plan, they have to engage their legal teams for providing and writing terms of services. They should contact privacy authorities to validate and so on. Thank you. Thank you, that's a, a very good question. And uh, the answer depends partly on what kind of data sets you're talking about. If you're talking about the high value data sets, that will be tackled pretty soon, and then there will be no way out of it. You know, if you're a, if the if the data set is amongst the high data value set, it's gonna be delivered through API. For everything else, it's not as clear, um, uh, but it's on the agenda, especially the relationship with the GDPR. We received a number of questions about that from the um, member states and from uh, different agencies, and that has to be clarified. And um, as far as I'm uh, informed, um, that will be dealt with, um, but it is not yet there. There's, there's no um, no timetable I could give you at the moment when this will be done. Thank you. More questions? Yes, please. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, one question, how is the EC planning to make this data available? Like you said, through APIs, but is there like kind of an IT department within the EC or would this be outsourced work and then every API that's provided is provided by like using different standards, using different means because like a different outsourcer implemented it? Like how is the way forward there? And yeah. That's exactly what this study is about, to find out what would be the best way to do it. Um, we also we will pro probably have a follow-up um, work after that, um, but there's no decision yet on how to do it, um, and that's what we partially want to get out of this workshop, actually, to see uh, what would be useful and what would be overbearing, you know, where, where, where would um, agencies, developers think, oh, no, you know, I would rather use the new te technology and not the one that they have now enshrined in law, you know, so you can easily get too far. So we want to see in that, but that was, the, was the, is what the study is about, to find out what is the current framework and what are the best practices. Thank you. I'm Katerina, thank you. Uh, just uh, my, my question is about the, from the policy point of view, do you think that we will need to upgrade the uh, GPR or it's uh, already enough wide that can all this work that it's for the future, you will be accepted there? Or we will have also to need to prepare more policy and more legislation over this uh, integration on the digital single market? I'm not sure. I, I mean, techno te the technology development is uh, one thing. The policy development is another thing. So my question was, on a, on a policy maker development level, we are already enough ma matured or we are still behind the technology? Because I understand the interoperability from a techn technological point of view, it's quite tricky. There will be a lot of research to be done about uh, the connectivity, about the exchange and sharing and uh, the utilization of the citizen and stuff like this. This is totally techn technological part. But from the political part, I, I think the GPR is quite wide. Uh, I mean, it's quite, um, uh, it's more or less all the topics. So I don't know if we will need to upgrade it later on when this techno uh, the technological development is improved. I mean, it's deployed. Because to the moment we don't have it, but we need to think in this future that it will be deployed on the European scale. So, do you think that the policy in this moment it's uh, b before the technology, or we are still behind? Well, from um, you know, strictly sp um, speaking, only about GDPR. I think GDPR is now what we have. Um, there will no be not be immediate changes, and uh, honestly, I don't think that that they are needed. Actually, we, it's a great improvement that we have now a common European framework for all this, um, well, which is far more, uh, and uh, also technically it can be handled in the same way in every member state. Um, there are certain um, aspects where I think um, clarifications um, as to 
they, um, how, how this r relates to data reuse, reuse of personal data only, yeah? um, where, where clarifications and guidance could be helpful, but that doesn't mean that we change the regulation itself. This is especially uh, the case for intergovernmental reuse of data, um, not so much about sharing it with third parties, but you know, um, you know, when can I share data with another department, something like that. That is uh, something where guidance, I think, will, will be issued. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dietmar.